When doing any of these problems, I like to highlight what it is that I have and what it is that I need to get to and kind of make myself a little bit of a note of what I'm starting with. So I'm starting with 12.66 grams of gallium and I need to get to moles of gallium iodide. So the first thing I should note is I'm starting with a material A and I need to get to a different material B. And the only way to get from one material to a different material is to use the mole to mole ratio, which uses the coefficients, which are here and here in the balanced equation. And so um, I can't use my mole to mole ratio until I get my 12.66 grams of gallium into moles. So my steps are gonna be this. I'm gonna have to take my grams of gallium and I'm gonna have to get and find out how many moles of gallium I have. And then I can use my mole to mole ratio to find out my moles of gallium iodide. And then I'll have my answer. So go ahead and pause it. See if you can lay that out. Um, and if you're totally stuck, then continue on. So here's what your work should look like. <clears throat> I first um, start with my grams of gallium. And then in this step right here that I'm outlining in yellow, I convert to my moles of gallium. And then in the second step, <clears throat> I use my mole to mole ratio from my coefficients. And that gets me to my answer. I do want to talk about how you would use the setting one ratio equal to another ratio in this. So you start with <clears throat> your 12.66 grams of gallium and we want to know how many moles of gallium iodide we need. So we can just set this equal <clears throat> to how many grams of gallium we would need. So what I do is I look at my coefficient here and in this equation I would need two moles of the mass of gallium. So my total mass of gallium because I need grams of gallium on top. I have to do that coefficient of two times the grams. And then on the bottom, I want to know moles of gallium. So that's two moles of gallium that I get from here of the gallium iodide. And that goes on the bottom. Um, so if you're using the method where you set one equal to another, you're starting with grams of gallium. And so we have to calculate our grams of gallium by using our two coefficient and multiplying it by the molar mass. And then we can go ahead and set that equal to moles of gallium iodide are equal to two moles of gallium iodide because that's what our equation says here. And then we simply cross multiply to solve. And you'd get the same thing as doing the other method. So on my next problem, I am given grams of H2. So we're gonna be starting out with 4.25 grams of H2 and it wants me to convert that to moles of ammonia. So I kind of laid out that if I'm starting with grams of H2, I'm going to have to find out how many moles of H2 that is first so that then I can use my mole to mole ratio using those coefficients from the balanced equation in order to find out my moles of NH3. So that's it laid out for you. See if you can do um, the two steps to solve this problem. So here's my problem solved. You can see my first step to cancel out my grams of H2, and then my next step in order to cancel out my moles of H2, so that then my answer is in moles of NH3. I will do it the alternative method as well. So on the alternative method, I start with my known and I put my X of my unknown underneath and then I have to use my same units. I start with grams of hydrogen. So in order to find out how many grams of hydrogen go in, I have to multiply by three because this equation says that three moles of hydrogen are necessary. So I'm gonna multiply that molar mass right here that I just highlighted. <clears throat> that molar mass is gonna be multiplied by three moles and that's gonna tell me, tell me my total grams of H2, and then I use the coefficient in front so that my moles of NH3 is on the bottom of each one, and then I can cross multiply to solve for the alternative method. 
So I've laid out the next problem. I am given grams of CO2 and it wants me to know moles of propane. The only way to get to moles of a different material is to first calculate my moles of CO2. So this is a two-step problem. So here's what my three steps look like there. My first step, um, converting from grams to moles of CO2, and then my second step using the coefficients to convert from moles of CO2 over to C3H8. I will do the alternative method as well. So here is the alternative method. Um, my grams of carbon dioxide that I start with to find out how many grams of carbon dioxide go into this. I take the molar mass of carbon dioxide and multiply it by three because the equation up here says three. And then um, what I wanna know is moles of C3H8. So I put moles of C3H8 and I use the coefficient from up in the equation of one to go there and then I can cross multiply and solve. All right, here's the next problem. I've laid out my steps of what I have to do in order to solve this problem. So first, in order to get from moles of gallium to grams of a different material, I have to use my mole to mole ratio using the coefficients. Then once I've used that mole to mole ratio, I now know how many moles of gallium iodine I have. And I can use the fact that one mole of gallium iodine has a molar mass of 450 grams. So I'm doing this step right here second and when I solve I get 245.48 grams of gallium iodide. I will do the alternative method as well. So on the alternative method I do have moles of gallium and my equation tells me how many moles of gallium and then I have on the bottom my unknown grams of gallium iodide. Well to know how many grams of gallium iodine get produced I have to multiply the molar mass of gallium iodide by the coefficient for this particular equation for gallium iodide, which is 2, so I can cross multiply and solve for my x. So the first thing that I have done is I have laid out my steps of what it is that I need to do for my next problem. I start with moles of hydrogen and it wants me to get to grams of a different material. So my only way to get to grams of a different material is to first get to moles of that other material using my coefficients and the mole to mole ratio. Then I can finally finish up with calculating my number of grams of NH3 using the molar mass. So here's what my work looks like. Um, I have my first step here of using my mole to mole ratio to cancel out my moles of H2 so that I can get to moles of NH3. And then I've got my last step of moles of NH3. One mole of NH3 has a mass of 17.3 grams. So that gives me my answer that I have here. And I will do the alternative method. And there is my work in red for the alternative method, setting up my grams, um, I'm sorry, my moles of H2 equal to the coefficient. And then I want to know my grams of NH3. So since my equation doesn't tell me that, I have to calculate my grams of NH3 by using the coefficient times the molar mass. And that would tell me my grams of NH3 that would be produced. So here are my steps for the last one. I'm starting with 73.5 um, moles of, I apologize, this should say moles, of H2O. And then I need to get to um, moles of C3H8. So I'm gonna do that by using my mole to mole ratio in this step right here. And then I'm going to use the molar mass of C3H8 to get to my grams of C3H8.